is it above me or to the side of me? It's above me. Above me. We are at Kona Grill in New Jersey. I have never, ever been here before, but we are gonna try all the appetizers, entrees, so much sushi, cocktails, sake, dessert, you name it, we're trying it today. Anytime we're trying something that's not like burgers and ribs, I get very excited because I'm like, it's gonna be lighter, it's gonna be easier. That has always been proven to be false. Bye. I am trying to find the alcohol menu. Of course you are. Found it. So proud. I think it's gonna be kind of like Bonefish Grill. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that when I'm in here, but I think it's gonna be similar maybe. I'm showcasing the food. Isn't this how like showgirls do it? It's like the shoulders. Pop, pop. Our favorite round is here, the first round. We have to start with the spicy shrimp tempura. It is beautiful, it's candied. Look at that sauce, it's just glazing over it. We have sesame seeds, green onions. I'm gonna do the one that has the most amount of sesame seeds to start. This is much spicier. This is much spicier than the other shrimp dishes we've had. Most of the other ones are pretty aioli forward. There's a bit of a cumin wafting flavor, which seems odd. That was way spicier than I had expected. It's fine, fine. There. It's on the entire back of my throat. I think people put too much aioli on things and are scared to give people the spice that they need in their life. If you like your spice, it, it's fun. It like builds up on you. We have our jalapeno yellowtail sashimi. Look at the beautiful, beautiful plate. We have sliced jalapeno, cilantro, yuzu ponzu. Yuzu ponzu is really good with like light fish. Do I do a whole jalapeno? Ooh, look at that ponzu. I totally could have done a bigger jalapeno. Yeah, I totally could have done a bigger jalapeno. I had to think about it for a second. They do have the seeds in there, so it does have that punch, but it has a crunch as well. It's crunchy, it's fresh, it's cold, obviously. It's super light. I love the cilantro on there. Into it, very into it. Now we have the new old fashioned. A really beautiful old man drink, I would say. It has Jim Beam vanilla bourbon, citrus. Oh, brown sugar. Ooh. It has this really, really great cherry vanilla flavor going on. It's much sweeter than I expected. I know it looks like a drink that you should be sipping casually, but you could easily down this as well. It reminds me of a very grown up vanilla Coke, vanilla cherry Coke, but with bourbon. We have a lemongrass clam chowder, which kind of looks like Tomka guy, but look in here. We've got the clam. We have bacon. We have red pepper flakes, very clammy. If you just have the broth on its own, it's delicious because it's lemongrass with a little bit more fattiness and oomph to it. I feel like this is something that June would concoct and come up with like in budget eat style. It's like something where you're like mixing and matching. I think if she tried this, there would be something missing. There's like a spice missing, but I'm intrigued. I keep eating it because it's so intriguing. Every bite is a little bit different than the last one. Fascinating. The, the most unique clam chowder I've ever had. We have pot stickers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pot stickers. It has chicken, vegetable. We got our slaw here, and this looks like just a typical soy sauce with a little bit of green onions in there. It's very plain Jane. There's not much seasoning on the inside of the pot sticker. So it's really the soy sauce that's shining. If you didn't have the soy sauce, I think it would be one note flavor. If you're someone who is a little bit, who doesn't enjoy seafood maybe, or you're a little bit nervous about spicy food, I think this is a neutral option. Oh no, now we just have the sliders and the beef balls. Which one do you want to do first? I think I should do slider, beef ball, slider. May I say that this wooden plate is gorgeous and lightweight. Like I, when I picked it up, I thought it was gonna be very heavy and I almost flung this thing off. Up next we have the seared sea bass sliders. Miso sea bass, furikake, miso aioli, pickled veggies, king's Hawaiian rolls, cucumber salad, and russet potato chips. That's a lot of flavors going on in here. Oh, there we go. Ooh, yes. <gasps> Beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen a fish slider besides White Castle. And that was a different time in my life. As you can see, I'm still in my beautiful apartment. You know, this could have gone way worse. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. This is the perfect amount of like vinegar. It is such a lovely, soft, pillowy bread. Thank you, King's Hawaiian. Not sponsored, but thank you. That has to be the winner of this round. There's no way anything can beat that. It's vinegary. It has the right amount of fatness and creaminess. It's fresh. It's so good. Seared sea bass sliders, I've already decided is the round winner. So we don't have to try the rest. We have the ribeye meatballs. These look like what I would serve at my wedding if I was rich. Five choice ribeye meatballs with shallot and shiitake, macadamia nuts, chili glaze, creamy peppercorn sauce, and whipped potatoes. How do you actually eat this though? A fork and a knife? Oh, this is a beefy boy. Ah. I'm gonna add some shiitake onto this bad boy. The shiitake mushroom gives it this really lovely earthy umami flavor. It makes it really smooth. The meatball, is sweet, like a barbecue sauce sweet. And crunchy, a really crunchy meatball. It reminds me of some sort of like fusion Thanksgiving meal. I don't, I can't quite place why. I personally find this very messy and hard to eat, but it's beautiful. She's gorgeous. What she makes up, what she doesn't make up for in accessibility, she makes up for in her looks. We have the KG, as in Kona Grill sliders. There's cheddar cheese, caramelized onions, a secret sauce. We have a grilled Hawaiian roll. Beautiful. All right, high expectations. Oh, I didn't put the secret sauce on it. I was like, it's kind of dry. Sorry, redo. So it has a flame broiled taste to it, like it's been on your cookout, you know? But it is missing that flavor, even though I added a lot of the secret sauce. So I wanna try the secret sauce on its own. She's a French fry. Oh. If only I had an edible thing to try it with. The secret sauce is got ketchup, it's got mayo, it's got paprika. It's got a little bit of mustard. Relish. It's not as punchy as other secret sauces I've had. I think you need to douse your slider in the secret sauce for it to get that really juicy, lovely bite that you want. Why even try this one when you can get the sea bass slider? That is without a doubt the best thing here. The only thing that even comes close is probably the sashimi. All right. No, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. No. We're at Kona Grill here today, and we are gonna have the KG cheeseburger. And we have a double quarter pounder. Do you like how I just went straight into it? Didn't even, wow. I'm a professional. Okay. And it's a double quarter pounder, American cheese, grilled onions, tomato, lettuce, special sauce. I've been an expert cheeseburger slicer this entire time we've been shooting, impeccable. Never messed up once. And um, I did this? <laughs> Which I don't know if you guys can tell, like there's no burger in here and all the burgers in here? I don't know. You know what I have to say you haven't asked for yet? What? A slow-mo moment. I'm really proud of you. Oh, you've right really now, grown. Right now, right now, right now. No, no, you've no, grown. No, 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 I'm cutting, I'm cutting. How you doing there, bud? I don't know. One second, I need a napkin. Yeah, I think it's so messy. So I'm gonna blame everything on the, my slicing job. This thing is messy. <laughs> don't, don't look at it, don't look at it. I swear this is a different special sauce because this tastes more barbecue-y than the last special sauce we had. The meat is super, super tender. I know people get weird about having their burger meat be medium or medium rare. I love that, it makes it juicier. I love the double cheese in between. I think that there's almost too much tomato and lettuce in this, which I've never complained about before, but it's almost like so vegetable packed in there that it's kind of overpowering the burger. French fries, similar to McDonald's, very thin and crispy. I don't know if I'm sold on getting a burger at Kona Girl. I don't tell you the truth there. French dip time. I love French dips. French dips are amazing. You get an au jus sauce, you get horseradish on the side, Prime rib, parmesan, grilled onions, crusty flaky bread. There's nothing that a French dip could do wrong to me. Before we're gonna eat this, as I'm slathering on my horseradish, we're gonna do a fun fact. Fun fact, Kona Grill started 
in Scottsdale, Arizona in 1998. Another fun fact on top of that, because that was such a short fun fact, is that Kona Grill has over 40 sauces at their restaurant. I wasn't paying attention. Is that a lot? I do like when it clears out your sinuses, though. Big jumbo guy. That au jus is thick. Wait. No. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> Not on my watch. I just aggressively went into that bite. You really did. I think we have a dry problem. I'm trying to figure out if it's a me problem or it's a them problem. The au jus tastes like red wine. It has a very strong red wine flavor. It is actually a really, really thick au jus sauce. I think the filet mignon might be overcooked. How do I say that nicely? Without the horseradish sauce and the au jus, the sandwich cannot exist. It needs all the au jus on it. I would say you might even need two bowls of the au jus. Oh God, I made such a mess with that burger. Mm. I'll just clean the floor after. Sorry. I have a piece of the French dip in my tooth. Do you see it? You're not saying anything. It's so undignified. Got it. Okay, great. Like beef floss. We have the sweet and blue salad. We have cherry tomatoes, apples, blue cheese. This looks beautiful. We have spinach. We have spring mix, pecans. These are big chunks of blue cheese. Do you see that? Are you kidding me? Is that bacon on there too? Do you ever feel like a bunny? A little rabbit. This might be my favorite so far of this round. It is really well balanced, well seasoned. It's the right amount of richness, creaminess. It feels like a real meal because it has the bacon and blue cheese in there. I really do enjoy this. And with the apples, you're getting that right amount of crunch. It's just got a well balanced feel to it. It's like a student who plays an after school sport and is also like on the chess team, you know? a well-balanced person. We have the sparkling sake. This is possibly, I think I say this every time, this is one of the most beautiful drinks I've ever seen. If I was having a pink themed party of some sort, this would be at it. You know what? No, 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 Valentine's Day. This looks like a Valentine's Day drink. I would want it for a nail color, not a lip gloss color though. It's kind of bubblegum tutti frutti. We have sparkling sake, we have lychee. I say lychee, but other people say lychee. But growing up, we always said lychee. But lychee sounds not good. Okay, here we go. Lychee. There you go. Lychee, told you all. Okay, so the British say lychee, while Americans say lychee. The British way of pronouncing sounds quite elegant and sophisticated. The American way sounds simpler. That's what they said on the internet. Okay, there's this lychee candy growing up. It comes in these tiny little molds. It look, it's almost like a jello. They were little jello cups. And this tastes just like the lychee jello cup that we had. They actually stopped making them at one point because they were a huge choking hazard. Because how small it was, and you just like, and you would like pop it into your mouth. That's so nostalgic. I don't taste any alcohol, but. Amazing. Up next, we have a barbecue chicken flatbread, which I feel like it's kind of a CPK thing, right? So we have red onions, we've got cheddar cheese, we got our chicken. Mmm. You can smell the red onion and barbecue sauce. Barbecue chicken. It has a cilantro and red onions. And when you have that with the barbecue sauce, it really plays off of the sweetness of it. That's amazing. This really does remind me of the CPK barbecue chicken one, but this has more cilantro on it, so you're getting it with every bite, which I prefer. That's delicious. Last thing, okay. Poke bowl time. It's beautiful. Macadamia shells, we got seaweed. I wonder, did they, I think they gave us tuna. Avocado for a cake. Mm. What is this? Little cucumbers? How do I do this in a dignified way? You don't. Okay, I was gonna do this. Smoosh. I love you. I'm trying to get the avocado quite nice with me. You're really getting everything on there. Don't I know, I'm, I'm no. trying. Stop. Here you go. Sweet. That's a lot of, one second. There we go. Fresh. It's simple. You don't have to have a lot of flavor because you have, it's kind of like a sesame oil type flavor and a little bit of that furikake, which gives a little bit of that salty umami springiness to it. It feels super light, easy going. 
This is a great lunch option to me. You could get this as an appetizer for the table. It really does taste like home to me. It tastes like one that you just get off the street and they like serve them in these little cups. You just buy them anywhere. Favorites. This drink, sake sangria is a favorite in the salad. I don't think I've ever had a salad be my favorite, but this salad is exactly what I wanted. Amazing, delicious. I don't know, maybe I'm a changed woman. What? Ready for round three? No. Oh, it's so pretty. Round three, halfway mark, and we have a bountiful table in front of us. What we're gonna start with is the easiest thing, which is in front of me. We have our pad thai. We've got some peanuts, shrimp, ooh, cilantro. <laughs> it's like a sweet and sour mix flavor. Sweet and sour mix isn't what pad thai is, right? Am I just imagining things? So far from everything we've tried, they all have kind of a different, like a riff on what you're eating. It's like this restaurant is kind of more of a fusion restaurant, so it makes sense that also the meals aren't exactly what you expect. Like it's not a classic pad thai. That's, it's like unexpected every single time. Huh, okay. Salmon, salmon, our favorite, favorite thing. Hello, boyfriend. And crispy Brussels sprouts. Look, they're golden, they're crispy. Oh, am I gonna eat Brussels sprout before I eat the salmon? Maybe. <laughs> Simple, easy, doesn't need to be messed with. Love that. We have our sweet chili glazed salmon here. Beautiful. When you get the herbs on there, the cilantro packs the, all the flavor in it. I want more of that all over it. The salmon is basically pure. There's nothing that's overpowering the flavor, which as a salmon purist, I really appreciate. Here we have in front of us the macadamia nut chicken. I have never seen or heard of anything like this before. It has a shoyu cream sauce on it, which yes, like a soy sauce with heavy cream mixed in. It reminds me kind of like a candy, like it's gonna be like a sweet, creamy chicken. Okay. Oh. Yeah, there we go. That's what I've been missing. Holy shit. That's good. It really is the shoyu cream. I mean, it's very simple. It's just like cornstarch, sugar, heavy cream, and soy sauce. I've never had something like that. And the chicken almost reminds me of how like a chicken parm is cooked. Really crispy, thin sliced, fantastic. I would make that a sandwich if I could too. Oh wait, can we do this one yeah. before we go to the meats? We have the patio bubbles, which has a mango vodka in it, and then more mango flavoring, which is interesting because it's pink. Oh, those are little raspberries. Okay. So it's a little bit of a bub bubbly situation. Patio bubbles, so, duh. Somehow, the mango isn't bothering me. We've had a few mango drinks recently that are very strong, very intense mango. One of my favorite fruits, but in cocktails, it can be so overpowering and it makes it so you can't really enjoy what you're eating because it's overpowering. This isn't as good as the lychee drink we had before. That's my favorite, but this is pretty up there. This is like second place for me. Sea bass time. We have a miso sake Chilean sea bass here. We have bok choy, some fried rice on the side. Oh, it's like blackened. That is a shiny fish. Look at that. That looks like it's gonna be tender. That's just melting. Ooh, that is a rich yet light experience in my mouth. I missed you. I missed you so much. You're beautiful, beautiful fish. Buttery, gorgeous. Why are you sitting back like that? Let me show the people how Chelsea is sitting right now. <laughs> this is you right now. I need you to get the wide shot. This is how you, this is such an under chin, double chin when you sit like that. If I wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Go ahead, yeah. That is the worst angle you could possibly choose. Get. Was that even comfortable how you were so sitting? Oh, okay. <laughs> you can do pasta. Oh, big bowl. Ooh. Chelsea said this looks like a bunny. This is some cheesy garlic bread. We have lemon garlic penne. We have arugula, tomatoes, chicken, lemon, parm. You know when you take a bite of something and you're like, that's just not good for me? You know immediately, you're like, that, that can't be good for my body, but you can't stop eating it. That's what this is. 
buttery, lemony, garlicky, creamy. That is hitting all of the spots. This is the most comforting thing we've had so far. My grandma would never make this. This is far too, this is like elevated, you know? Not that my grandma isn't elevated. She can totally be elevated. She's gonna be so mad. She's dead, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> I set you up for that one. I think it's cheesy garlic bread. Here we go. Spinach in the What? Spinach in the teeth. What? I had spinach in my teeth. This is full package. Yet again. Love it, definitely. Definitely my favorite round. We have our surf and turf. We have a shrimp and lobster roll. And then we have a Big Island steak, which is ri a huge ribeye. Actually, you know what? We've seen bigger, but it's pretty up there. We have a ribeye with a bunch of island butter. I'm not sure what island butter is. What do you think makes island butter island butter? Is it like macadamia nut butter? It's almost like a mango butter. You think it's a fruity butter? Ooh, you know what? There is like a passion fruit type butter that my mom used to make. I feel bad just licking a fork full of butter. It's fruity, it's a fruity butter, which is really, really welcomed when you're eating such a fatty, salty steak. Having something like a fruit in there, lovely. Oh, I can see my own hair in there. How did I get my own hair in my steak? Oh well. It's a very thin ribeye and it has a lot of fat in it, so it's extremely melty and buttery. Oh God, come on, Julia, be strong. Smells like lobster. Am I eating a whole bite? This sushi is a mouthful of lobster, like a whole chunk, but that's all lobster in there. And it might not look like that much right now on camera, but it's a lot when you're eating it. The lobster flavor is much more intense than like a crab or a shrimp flavor to me. That with this actually kind of balances each other out. I think the Big Island steak is better than the sushi in this round. I know we're gonna do a whole round of sushi, so I'm sure the Big Island steak will not be my favorite after a while. But when it comes to just these two together, the Big Island steak I would almost get with the vegetables on its own. I don't know if it needs the sushi roll with it. So with that being said, the macadamia nut chicken takes number one spot. That was out of anything here, you have to order that. That was amazing and unique. I haven't had that anywhere else. I have nothing else to say. Thank you for your time. I had a fun fact that I haven't used yet, and I can slightly hear disco music playing in the background, so it feels like time. Fun fact, Kona Grill has, I would like the editor to cue like whatever vibe means to them, maybe disco or something. Take it high. They have vibe dining here, which means that they have a DJ at every single one of their restaurants every night for whenever you want to have a vibe dining experience. That's my fun fact. Sake. You can get a flight of any three that you want. We asked them to just put together their favorites. So we have the pear, the nigori, and the awayuki sakis. Oh, this actually really smells like fresh, like a fresh Asian pear. It smells more like pear than it tastes. It's kind of creamy. Okay, speaking of creamy, the nigori, it looks like watered down milk. Basically no scent. It looks like coconut water, but it is much more savory of a sake. Abayuki, here we go. Oh, this one smells really fruity, really floral. Tropical, it's like, it has like a, almost like a banana. This one's the most drinkable. It's almost like a soda, a soda sake. See, it's actually has bubbles in there. I don't know if you probably got that on camera. Yeah, this is a bubbly sake. I think this is what we had in our um, drink from the other round. Well, now that I'm properly intoxicated, we have the Picasso roll. So we have yuzu ponzu down here with the togarashi. We have jalapeno, we have yellowtail on top, we have a togarashi spicy mix in the middle, avocado, cilantro. It's got all the flavors that I want. This is also gonna be really spicy. Yeah, okay. There's really nothing breaking up the spice except the avocado. <laughs> It was meant to be that the jalapeno was gonna fall on the ground, 
because it's amazing without it. The ponzu is a life changer event for me in my mouth. Without the jalapeno, it has such a great crunch to it. With the jalapeno, I bet it's even extra crunchy and delicious. We've only had two rolls, but this is my favorite roll so far. Excellent presentation, gorgeous. I could eat that whole thing. I don't think you need that much jalapeno, but maybe if you love jalapeno. Um. <laughs> Up next, we have a sushi boat, essentially. Okay, so we have a smelt row. So what we have in here is rice in the bottom. You can almost kind of see it here, possibly. We have fish eggs on top, which they're really just a little bit briny, salty. It's more of a texture thing. I know a lot of people have a hard time with eating the fish eggs, but I mean, you eat chicken eggs all the time. You know, just get over it and you'll be fine. Then we have our crunchy, spicy roll. Then we have our shrimp tempura roll. Super simple, easy going. We have the checkerboard sushi, which comes with habanero tuna, avocado, asparagus, tuna, yellowtail, and spicy motoyaki mayo. I've just eaten like a hundred little babies all at once. <laughs> Let's be honest with ourselves. Oh, got some stuck in my teeth. Little babes. This is why vegans hate us. It's so much, there's little fish eggs all in my mouth. I'm so sorry. This is a perfect amount of salty brininess that you want. You can eat two bites of this. It's very filling because if you notice, most of it is rice. I don't think it needs any seasoning on it, any dipping sauces. I think it's great in its pure form. I think that a soy sauce would be actually a little too intense. I would almost take the ponzu and put it on there. You just need a little bit of like a citrus flavor and you're good. We have the crunchy spicy tuna roll. That's gonna be the right amount of sweet and savory, I think. Just a little, ooh, drip, drip. Ooh, that heat took a long time to hit me. Interesting. It's a heat that is actually going like around my eyeballs and through my head and making my entire head very, very warm. I love that. The eel sauce makes it a little bit like sticky and sweet. And you have the cucumber in there, which is actually very strong. I'm not a huge cucumber fan myself but if you're very into cucumber, I think you would like the mix of there. For me, it's just a little too much of the cuke going on. Sake break. You gonna have one? Cheers. Shrimp tempura with a lot of avocado and cucumber in there, and we have some white sesame seeds on top. Dip, dip, a little baby oh. amount. I like this one more than this one. You would think the one that's prettier, more decorated, would be the one that's better for me. The shrimp tempura, I guess it's just like the fact that it's like a fried shrimp flavor. It just is way more like cohesive. They were all kind of fighting for the spotlight. Well, this one, they were all like agreed that they were gonna be a team and work together nicely. Checkerboard. We have the habanero tuna, avocado, asparagus, tuna, yellowtail, spicy, motoyaki, mayo. There is so much fish going on. And what's funny is that the spicy mayo really just overpowers all of it to where it's just a texture at that point. So there's two different spices going on. The spicy mayo is very like pow in your face. And then the little spicy mix on the inside is much more smooth and is like chilling, waiting for the other one to have its, have its moment. The shrimp tempura roll, which is the simplest of these was actually my favorite. Well, besides Picasso roll. Picasso roll is number one. So we have three different sashimis here, and then we have our coconut shrimp roll. The sashimi, we have tuna, we have salmon, and we have yellowtail. For the crunchy roll, I'm extremely excited about this one. We have cream cheese in here. The coconut shrimp roll has toasted macadamia nuts, mango cucumber, hibiscus nectar, cream cheese, and a soy paper. That is such an interesting combo. I think I have to try it on its own before I add anything to it. Oh, it's gonna fall apart, I'm gonna eat it. The coconut shrimp, it's a very small amount that you're getting in the roll. It's a really strong, potent coconut considering it's a very small amount in there. I welcome that after having things that are very spicy and crunchy that this one is just fully different. We've technically already had the yellowtail with the other sushi and the tuna, so we're gonna go on in the salmon. Mm, look at that thick. Oh, it's beautiful, it's lustrous, it's gorgeous. I wish I could convey my love for salmon in like one sentence or even in a haiku. I love you, salmon. You are so tender and fat. 
in a good way. Please never leave me. Without a doubt, the Picasso roll is my favorite. Nothing else stood a chance against it. The only thing that came close was the coconut shrimp roll. Maybe you order the roll for the table and you each get to have one bite of it because it is just so fun and different. And coconut shrimp is, I think, a fan favorite most places you go. So it's a fun iteration of it. Also, this sake, which was the Awayuki favorite of the, of the sakis. I don't know where I'm gonna fit dessert in here. Every time we've eat, I eat like one bite of each dish usually, but one bite of sushi is a lot. That's a big bite. Okay, fine, let's do it. I know what's gonna be my favorite. We're starting with a very nutty coffee bread pudding. I can only smell pecans and caramel. I don't even smell the coffee. So this bread pudding is soft, right? I think bread puddings tend to be, tend to get this um, connotation of being really, really mushy. And this one, I have to say, actually stays together nicely and there's a really delightful crunch from the pecans. No mush happening here. Don't taste it really any coffee necessarily, but do taste amazing caramel and pecan. We have the original butter cake right here and it has a raspberry jam of some sort. I, it looks like raspberry and it's a beautiful color. Oh my God. It's the right amount of tart in there. I love when we get something that's slightly sour. It's like a stick of butter, met some raspberries and had a baby. It is pretty much butter. The butter cake is super dense and slightly sticky. And with the raspberry in there, it needs, I think it needs like a whole side of the raspberry jam, but it's delightful the mix of the two together. It's so simple. A little bit of a crunch too. Sometimes simpler is better. We have the Casamigos tequila margarita and it has the tagine rim on here. It's gonna be simple, easy, right? What I like about this margarita is that there's very little sour mix or whatever sour mix they use is house made of some sort because you can tell when a margarita is not very good is when it's like basically electric green. This does not taste like that. This tastes very much like real lime juice or like a real sour mix. Coconut rum cake and then with lime zest on it. it smells like corn. I don't know. Are my taste buds off today? Why am I tasting corn? It reminds me of that, but like a tray leche corn cake rum cake. I don't know why I'm tasting corn. I don't understand. I don't know where it's coming from. I might need you to take a bite because I don't, I actually don't know if this is just something wrong with my taste buds. Not hearing that I just said corn, what does it taste like to you? Corn. Actually, are you just messing with me? What I've learned today again at Kona Grill is that they keep throwing these oddball ingredients at me that I don't expect at all. This is one of the most beautiful desserts that we've seen today. Gorgeous, love it. But yeah, there is um, an earthiness to it. We have the carrot cake. We have one, two, three, four, five, six layer carrot cake here. So when they're talking about layers, you have cake layers and icing layers, but some restaurants just combine the two together. So what you would think of this as like a three layer cake, right? They might call it actually six layers because the icing layers. Lots of carrots in here. Like you can visibly see the carrot chunks. And it looks like, are there raisins in there? I think there might be golden raisins. Oh no, pineapple. Mmm. This might be the best. There's a cream cheese tankiness to it. The caramel has that really good saltiness. It almost reminds me of like a Thanksgiving dish, like Thanksgiving dessert I've had. But there's something Thanksgiving-ness about it. Is it because of the pecans and caramel? Well done carrot cake. I love that one. If you need to get a Thanksgiving cake anywhere, come to Kona Grill. Last but not least, we have our margarita flight. Wow. It's actually called a frozen flight. Watermelon, strawberry, and mango frozen margaritas. What I've understood is that the base for all is the same. It's just the flavoring that has been added. So they shouldn't be vastly different from each other. It's so beautifully whipped. Look at that. Mango first. Oh wait, final fun fact. On the weekends, they do unlimited Kona Mosas. Or in participating locations, $3 each. 
I was proud of that one. I was like a Kona Mosa. I love that. It's so sour. I wasn't ready for it. Going from the carrot cake to this, let me. Ooh, that is the most sour mango I've had. I love sour things. I just wasn't expecting it from that. Okay, next one, strawberry. I'm gonna mix them better. I think that that was the problem. My straw went all the way to the bottom. It was just pure like mix. That tastes like a theme park margarita. I'll let you decide what that means. <laughs> it's really potent. It's a really potent strawberry margarita. Okay, the last one's watermelon. Let me mix, 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 mix. Ooh, can you see how pretty that is on camera, the ombre? I want my nails done like that. Last one. So this one tastes like a Sour Patch Kid watermelon because as I said before, these are very sour. So add the watermelon flavor in, Sour Patch Kid. Wow, okay. I think the strawberry one, I know, I know the strawberry one. The strawberry one is my favorite, but I do like this in a flight form just because you can just play with the different flavors and you know, make it a little game. They actually have other flavors as well. They have a blueberry and a peach. So you can get the whole rainbow if you want. Be my guest. <sighs> my brain is going so slow. My favorite is the carrot cake. That one just, none of these could even play on the same field. Like the rest are all like JV trying to be on varsity. This one's varsity team captain. When it comes to the margaritas, I do just like a very simple, delicious margarita, like a Casamigos. But if you wanna have fun and play around, if you don't do the sake flight from earlier that we had, I do think a margarita flight is a very, very fun idea. And it's frozen. I never felt so like soulless and brainless at the end of a video than this one. Like my brain is getting smoother as I talk to you guys. Kona Grill was a place that you guys have been requesting nonstop probably since the first episode of this. And I see why you wanted me to come here. It makes total sense. I am very excited to try other places that you guys have in the comments that weren't at the top of my list or I didn't even know existed. This has been very fun, very informative. I'm wiped out. I have no more room. I have so many fish inside of me.